I'll tell you what, Bob, this is the only Oliver Perez the Yankees know. I mean, he always dominates them. He's got nasty stuff. And when you see him face the Yankees and you see him pitch this way, you wonder why he can't pitch like this all the time. With that sort of stuff, Kenny, this guy looks like a 20-game winner. Yeah, he was throwing in the mid-90s, maybe upper 90s from time to time. And uh, eight strikeouts. What impressed me about him today, didn't walk anybody. I mean, this guy's walked 52 batters, which means his concentration lapses. He gets himself into trouble against other teams, but not the Yankees. No walks today. Had second most walks in the National League coming in, and he looked like a dominant pitcher right from the get-go today. How do you explain that, David, that somebody could be so bad against the Mariners, the worst team in baseball, and then just dominate the Yankees? And this isn't just an aberration. He dominates the Yankees all the time. Well, you know, it, it's, it's got to be mental. Part of it's mental and part of it's mechanical. We've seen the mental side with him before. He loses his concentration. Next thing you know, you get him in the stretch. The Yankees couldn't get him in the stretch enough. When they finally did get him in the stretch, looked like he was starting to come unraveled. That's the thing with Perez. If you let him get going early, strike one, strike two, and catch you by surprise, and then the next thing you know, he feels comfortable. You, know, you never give him a chance to unravel. With Oliver Perez, you've got to put some pressure on him. Get a couple guys on base. Get the base runners running. Next thing you know, he's prone to, to kind of let it get away from him. That, and the Yankees really never got him in that position today. Oh, absolutely. And, and they were 0 for 4 just twice when Derek Jeter was on base. So it's really hard to gauge like that. This guy was very tough. He didn't work out of the stretch much at all. And, uh, and that is a key for him. Uh, the Yankees, when they lose, Kenny, mm -hmm. they don't get the big hits. And you can say that about a lot of teams. But I think that we kind of get seduced by the, uh, the Yankee lineup and what it is on resume-wise. Bottom line is they don't get big hits sometimes. Yeah, but the change in the lineup today, as you mentioned, a lot of right-handed hitters, uh, a lot of the big lefties getting the day off, Cano and Jason Giambi out of the lineup today altogether. And I think that really put pressure on the top four guys in the Yankee lineup, particularly A-Rod. I thought if the Yankees are going to win today, A-Rod would have to have a big day. He didn't. He was all around it. He just missed a couple of times. He saw him pull a ball foul into the seats, just missing a home run. It had the distance. Last time up, he got jammed a little bit on the classic A-Rod swing. That would have tied the ball game. So I thought he would have to have a big game today for the Yankees to win. It didn't happen. He was all around it. He's been all around it the last few days and hasn't hit one out of the ballpark. But he's not far away from doing so. Yeah, and that being said, if you have a home run pool, A-Rod might be the way to go for these next three games because it looked like he was right there but just missed. So usually gets his timing down, and then that just miss becomes a home run. Well, he really did. He did what he had to do. He kept his team in the game. There were a couple spots where that could have got away from him. He had David Wright up with the bases loaded, got him to 0-2, made a good front door cutter, got a ground out to third. You know, there was a couple spots in there where Rasner really could have come unraveled, really made the big pitches to get out of it, keep his team in the game. National League style game, he got pinch hit for only five innings. He could have gone a couple more innings and really maybe seven innings, two runs, that type of start. Well, Coney, why don't you take that? Because it definitely looked like he was a different pitcher in the second inning than he was in the first. Yeah, he showed, he showed some nerves early on. You know, we saw, we saw a fastball in the low 90s, kind of a little boring cutting action, looking for that big breaking ball to come as advertised. We didn't really see it in the first inning. You know, that's probably a product of nerves. The second inning, we did see some good ones. You kind of see the talent there. You see the break on that breaking ball. First outing, he obviously was very nervous. Got a big double play ball, though. That could have got ugly for him. You know, a big double play got him out of that inning, that second inning. I think he was a lot better than the first inning. Oh, that, that's really a childish act. I mean, you expect to see that out of 12-year-old little leaguers when they get charged with an error or if they make a throwing error themselves. And they're not being selfish. They're just upset that they made the error. I think that Reyes was upset that he got charged with an E6. Uh, I think he was too, Michael. And, uh, you know, it could have easily gone to Delgado. That was not the toughest play. Delgado is, you know, he's not going to be a... You know, confused with Don Manningly. Let's put it that way. But I, I think the play should have been his to make. Although the Dara got charged at a shortstop, and I, I think he was a little selfish on that play, throwing the glove. You know, somebody's got to talk to him. I mean, I mean, this just shouldn't pass. If you want to have a team that's going to win and win a division, come back and win it. They're not that far out. You got to be running on all cylinders. Everybody has to be copacetic so they went and moving in the right direction these are things that divide baseball teams now i know it looked as though delgado wasn't upset in fact he probably told uh, reyes that i should have made the play and that might have diffused the whole situation but you know it's going to come up later on and i i just think you, you can't have that thing i don't, can't have these same situations whether it's on a weekly basis monthly basis on a good ball club and i remember just on the yankee end, and i'm sure david does too because he was on this team david wells once showed up Derek jeter 
on a pop-up. And uh, Jeter went right to the mound and said, don't you do that. Nobody does that to you when you give up a home run. Don't you do it to us. We're all in this together. And I'm sure that Carlos Delgado was chapped, even though he didn't show it, because he's a veteran. He's not going to show it and let the world see how upset he is, although he had his arms crossed tightly after Reyes yeah. put on that little act. Yeah, it really was. And, you know, Carlos Delgado's been around a long time, as you said, Michael, and he did go up to him on the, be on the bench afterwards, and you could see Reyes kind of loosen up a little bit, and maybe they had a little laugh, but... You know, I think these are things that probably Carlos Delgado knows. You take it up to the clubhouse. You don't want the cameras to see if you're going to have an altercation or a fight. But you hear about baseball teams and players on the same team getting in fights, things like that that cause those things to happen. And you know, that was pretty bad, especially after the inning was over. As Singh, he said, mm -hmm. there was no damage done. That yeah. error caused no problems. You were out of the inning, and then he still continued to kind of throw a tantrum on the field, and it just looked really bad, especially when the cameras pick it up. Yeah, it could have gotten worse. If something had happened during the inning, the Yankees had scored. And that's when, you know, both of them get upset that, you know, somebody opened the door for the Yankees and they stepped through no matter who was at fault. And I'll tell you what, that's the conundrum that the Mets have. If they want to remake this team, I mean, one of their most tradable guys is Jose Reyes because he signed to a very fair contract. And his upside is just tremendous. But that's the seductive part of having Jose Reyes. You don't want him to find it and all of a sudden find maturation somewhere else yeah. and become the superstar that everybody expects him to be. So you kind of put up with that nonsense, thinking at some point, some way, he's going to grow up. This is his fifth year. That sometimes should be now.